I have bought so many games this year. None of my family are going to get any Christmas presents this year. <laughs> That's not very nice. I don't even like them anyway. Need to start saving now. <laughs> don't think there's many games coming out in 2023. Money, 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 money. With 2022 nearly over, we will start to look at 2023 and what games will be coming out. Hopefully all at 60 FPS. <laughs> I know IGN have just released a review, 5 out of 10, but I'm still buying it and I'm going to make the choice for myself. I was looking online and some of the games coming out in 2023 are going to be insane. I think it's going to be one of the best year for current gen games. We have to run through these top 20 PS5 games coming out in 2023. Number 20, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. A game I believe a lot of us were really excited for. From the reveal trailer we have been shown, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful game. Ubisoft do make amazing trailers. It's a totally different storyline to the up and coming film releasing this year, The Way of Water. This will be a first person perspective and I'm really not sure about that because being an Avatar, I want to see my character. Is it going to feel like a Far Cry game? Frick can hope not. The world looks incredibly rich with many different creatures. It also shows us us flying through this incredible open world, flying and transversing from different heights, whilst fighting with the RDA who look to threaten not just the world, but the Na'vi. I do assume it's going to be a generic storyline of the bad guys and they're trying to take the resources and kill everyone on there. It wasn't a great storyline in the film, but... Oh well. It will be a current gen only game and to be honest all the hype is kind of rinsed out of me. But nevertheless it's a game to eventually look out for in the deep deep future. Number 19. I never really played The Last of Us Factions but it was one of the most popular multiplayer games for the beloved franchise that was ruined by part 2. In the multiplayer, it's everything you love about The Last of Us. Players lead a clang of survivors, either fly, flies or hunters. And the idea is you have to gather supplies to grow the health of your clan. By completing objectives, collecting supplies and winning matches, you will see your team rise or fall based off your success. Each game counts as a week and it lasts for 12 weeks. Factions were supposed to launch with part 2, but Naughty Dog pivoted and decided it was worthy of its standalone platform. There are three different modes, supply raids, survivors and interrogation each with different objectives. Not much else has been revealed about the release of this standalone multiplayer, but it should be coming in somewhat 2023. Number 18, Tekken 8's trailer wowed the hell out of me. The graphics, the gameplay, it really respects the originality of Tekken. Tekken goes all the way back to the 1990s. <laughs> The character models look absolutely stunning from the lighting, the effects. <laughs> And just like Tekken 7, there are quite a few new characters, and I expect the same with Tekken 8. Not all characters have been revealed, but characters like Jin and Kazuya will be featured in the game, just like the trailer shows. It will be released only on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series and PC. Number 17, another famous fighting game that goes all the way back to 1987. <laughs> One of the most addictive multiplayer games if you do have a lot of friends, Street Fighter 6. There's been quite a lot of gameplay shown and I really like where they're going with this. Vibrant colours, the 3D background alongside other characters sitting in the background. This will be a cross-gen title as well as a cross-platform. So it's great knowing we can play with friends whatever console they have. <laughs> Ran out of coffee. Guys, if you really like the content, I just want to say I am over at Buy Me A Coffee where you can help support the channel. Oat milk with sugar-free caramel, please. Also, if you don't want to go over to there, you can hit a super thanks if you want. That is down in the description somewhere. It's a new feature for YouTube. You can help me out and help me make this my full-time job. Number 16. The Yakuza series has such a large fan base and it's great to see the legendary characters once again in Like A Dragon Ishin. It will take place in the 1860s in a fictional version of Japan Japan, way before the events from the main game. This is a fast paced action combat system like past games in the series, but in this game you can switch between four different styles, swordsman, gunman, wild dance and brawler. <laughs> 
There will be sub stories, side content, and this remake is looking very promising, especially with the use of these guns. Toy! -oy! <laughs> This will be multi-platform, so let's wait to see what Sega brings. Number 15. It's crazy that I've never played any of the Dead Space games. Wow, Jesus. You need to leave. Dead Space is being remade from the ground up with EA's Frostbite engine and is exclusive to current gen console. There will be a massive leap from the 2008 original and it will be dropping on the 27th of January. The sound design has been improved from Isaac's physical response, heart rate, breathing and dialogue. There will be the removal of loading screens, improved gore and improved lighting. As it's an actual remake, there will be additional rooms, there will be changes in the storyline, character models are totally redesigned and much more. This is another game you're going to be such on edge, especially if you're wearing your 3D audio headset. Shit. Number 14. There isn't a release date for Alone in the Dark, but I believe it is coming somewhat in 2023, and this game impressed the hell out of me. This remake goes all the way back to the original in 1992, 13 years ago. That's how old I am. The original was set in Louisiana mansion called Dakota and from the trailer it looks like we are going back there. We'll be able to pick from two different characters in the game playing as Edward Carnby or Emily Hartwood. I really love the third person view in this game because it reminds me of the Resident Evil games, especially the sounds. Number 13. I've spoken about the day before in a previous video and I'm excited for this game but also I am very very worried about this game. It will be a post-apocalyptic game and you'll be able to play online with other survivors in the game. I probably wasn't the only one excited, but then I started digging more into the company making this game. They have a massive reputation of making games and then giving up on them. They state that their culture is based off the idea of volunteering. I believe that they're a company that haven't got a lot of money and they rely on volunteers. And if you're not a volunteer, you do get paid. There has not been much revealed about this game. There's so much hype for it. I believe it's another abandoned situation, to be honest. I'm pretty sure that game is never coming out. Because how good it looked and how amazing the gameplay looked, it has to be mentioned. But I'm not going to let them get away with it. I'm still mentioning it. Number 12. A game by the famous Square Enix. <laughs> Forspoken is a timed exclusive to the PlayStation 5, but will also be releasing on PC. I was originally excited for the game, and then we had that one trailer. I'm somewhere that's not what I would call Earth. I'm seeing freaking dragons and... Oh yeah, I'm talking to a cop. Yeah, okay, that is something I do now. I do magic, kill jacked up beasts. The dialogue of the character didn't match up with my expectations of the game. Oh my god, I got freaking powers and cuffs. You play as Frey, who's transported to the beautiful and cruel world of Athea on her 21st birthday. She has magical abilities and she must find her way to survive and beat off monsters and creatures. This one's going to be a chore. Not the pep talk I needed. Yup. She'll have talking cuffs, which I'm not sure why they're so magical. They haven't really explained that. You will upgrade abilities, craft certain items in order to improve your stats. The way you can transverse with such speed is exciting. We're just going to have to wait till the reviews come out. Should be released January 24th. Number 11. Dead Island 2 will be based in LA. A few of you are immune to the virus and it's up to you to save the day. It can be a strict single player game or up to three player co-op. The trailer looks absolutely insane this truly looks like a next generation game look at this fridge the guns look crazy the blood the gore this just looks like a fun game to play and you will get to choose from six playable characters with fully customizable abilities to become the ultimate slayer <laughs> Number 12. 
This is one I am picking up, February the 3rd, 2023. Number 10. When I played Alan Wake Remastered on my PlayStation 5, I was blown away by the game. The storyline is insane. You play as Alan Wake, an author, who goes away with his wife. She disappears and you find yourself in a car accident. You find out that the place that you were staying at has not been there for years and you don't know if this is all in your head. Are you crazy or is this really happening? Alan Wake 2 is coming out next year and it's going to be amazing on current gen consoles. There aren't much details of the story with Alan but I can imagine this is a continuation of that story and you must find out what is going on in your head. This story will eat you alive. This story is a monster, and monsters wear many faces. We haven't seen any gameplay footage. I'm really excited for Alan Wake 2. Number 9. Resident Evil 4 Remake was insane. I remember playing that game being so freaking scared. And now they're remaking it, and you just know this is going to be on another level. Anyone home? Resident Evil 4 will be coming March 24th on current gen consoles. It could still release on previous gen, but I haven't heard anything yet. I don't really play VR because my house is way too small and I'll probably break it. VR 2! What do you, what? Do you do? <laughs> every, every time, every time. We, we live in a small place. It's small, man. Number eight, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. This was supposed to be coming out this year, but again, this was delayed. I think it's a game that is going to be insane because it's made by Rocksteady, the makers of the Batman Arkham games, and I wish they did create Gotham Knights, but I'm still holding hope for Gotham Knights. You will take control of the infamous bad guys, four playable characters, King Shark, Deadshot, Harley Quinn and Captain Boomerang. You are focused on destroying the city now instead of protecting it and you can play it alone or up to four player co-op. It's similar to Guardians of the Galaxy but I do believe it's going to be a lot better than that. I was hit and miss with that game. We will meet characters like Superman, The Flash. Did you get him? Really? Why don't you just mail me the bullet? And I hope Batman is in it to save the universe. But I assume he's either dead if it's the same as the Arkham games or... You know, maybe it's just a totally new Batman. Releasing of spring 2023. Who else needs a Batman? Number seven. Star Wars Jedi Survivor allows us to take control of Cal once again. Taking place five years after the events of Jedi Fallen Order, which is an amazing game. You know Cal is going to be a much more experienced Jedi as he continues to build the Jedi and help fight back to the Empire. It just surprised me that EA made this game because they can make great single player games. It will only be available to current gen consoles. Hopefully they're going to take much advantage of the current gen consoles. The EFPS. No gameplay shown at the moment, but I am super hyped for this game. Make sure you play the first one. Number six. When this trailer dropped, I had no idea what was going on. And then his claws come out and I was like, oh my gosh, they're making a Wolverine game. What made it even better is that Insomniac Games, probably the best PlayStation studio out there right now, is making the game. It's hard to say what the gameplay will be like because we haven't received any other news, but I suspect it will be coming out late 2023. I won't be surprised if it comes out in 2024 because we've got Spider-Man 2 coming next year. It's incredible what this game could become. Could they bring all the characters in together? Could you have Spider-Man in there? Could you have Wolverine and they all join together in one massive universe? There's no reason why they can't do that. Number five, Wulong Fallen Dynasty follows the same route as the Souls game. This game is based off Chinese mythology and it looks absolutely incredible. It does remind me of Elden Ring and it looks like a Souls game. More like Sekiro. There are many options for attack and defense in this game. You can light attack, heavy attack, and I believe there aren't any shields in the game. You can block with your swords, but this game relies heavily on parrying, just like Sekiro. And you can't just go about this game button mashing, hoping you're going to get through it. Developers have said it will be able to bring friends in our game and summon them so that they can help us out in the game, which is great. Hopefully it's not as hard as the Souls games, because that was 
so complicated just get someone in your game we can equip two weapons at the same time and we can switch back and forth from them you can get bows blades dual blades throwing knives so there is a lot of variation in the game <laughs> This game is scheduled for a release in early 2023. Number four. I love the Assassin's Creed franchise, more so the older games. But with the announcements of Mirage, it's brought back my childhood memories of actually being an assassin. It's made me excited about the game, but it's also made me very skeptical about this game. This was originally a DLC for Valhalla, but then they scrapped that. It's great to know Ubisoft are finally going back to their roots and we're going to be an assassin. We'll be playing as a younger Bassin from Valhalla, also known as Loki, as he is reincarnated. This game will be a cross-chain game. On Amazon, it states that this is coming out December 25th. Is it going to be rushed? What's good about the game is that they are more focused on planned assassinations, black box missions, which were incredible, and much more. It's going to be much more of a linear game, which I think we've all been kind of crying out out for an Assassin's Creed like this. Let's hope. Number three. Black Myth Wukon is an incredibly ambitious game from the developer Game Science and it is their first major project. We do not have too many details at the moment about the story but it's heavily based off Chinese mythology and it's focused on Sun Wukon, also known as the Monkey King, who is the main character. Sun Wukon is known for his incredible speed. strength and the ability to transform into a variety of animals and objects. Even though we haven't seen anything like that in the gameplay we have seen so far, imagine that we can just transform into flipping anything or anything around the world should I say. It just looks like a beautiful, beautiful game. And what I love about it is that the developers just say the game will be released when it is ready. The fighting reminds me of From Software's Demon Souls and Elden Ring which also excites me. I think it's going to be on par with how difficult the From Software games are which I'm up for it. I got this. Seeing this gameplay hypes me up. Number two, Hogwarts Legacy is an open world RPG game where you play as a witch or wizard and it is coming out February the 10th on current gen consoles, previous gen and the Switch. You can design your own witch or wizard and it takes place in the 1800s. You get to visit some iconic places such as the Forbidden Forest, Hogsmeade. You get to uncover secrets, learn spells, go to class and learn different abilities to become a better witch or wizard. You get to choose what house you are in and there will be other students in the game who may not be as good good a person as you but you get to choose whether to befriend them or not there is so much to be excited for this game i'm a big harry potter fan i know a lot of people aren't you can't knock what this game is going to offer you can't play quidditch in the game which was a bit of a bummer but listen it is what it is number one we have spider-man 2 and if you are not excited for this game you should be cancelled cancel and become like modern day society you shouldn't be cancelled, you're allowed your own opinion. Spider-Man 2 will be a current gen exclusive, which is great. And Insomniac Games says it's pushing the capabilities of the console. Venom will be in the game and there is talks of a potential co-op mode. Don't take what I've said as fact, but I've heard there potentially might be a co-op mode. Imagine there is where one of you's Peter Parker, one of you's Miles Morales, and you can go about the storyline doing it together. I hope so. I won't be disappointed if there isn't. I'm just excited for what this game is going to bring. No release date yet. I would say near the end of next year. They did release a statement I believe and they said that it is on par for next year's release. Now there's a few games I haven't mentioned but there's also a DLC that I haven't mentioned because Cyberpunk are bringing out a DLC next year called Phantom Liberty. I didn't think it was worth putting as a new game even though it should be a new game because they, they messed that up. But that's quite exciting if you do love the world of Cyberpunk. I haven't dived into it after I completed it. Also I didn't mention Skull and Bones from Ubisoft. 69 99. <laughs> I'm so not excited for this game. I think this is the biggest waste of time and it's been delayed about five, six times. What do you think of the games I've mentioned? What ones are you excited for? If there's any I haven't mentioned, make sure you comment them below. Let's take a look at the comment of the day from my previous video. 10 things you need to know about a Plague Tale Requiem. Shout out to Blue Suspect. Yo, this was hilarious and dope video. A Plague Tale Innocence was such a surprise to me. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. I had to pre-order Requiem. Thanks for the comment and honestly, I quickly got over the fact that there's no 60 FPS because it is such a beautiful game. I've seen a few glitches here and there, nothing major. It is one of the best games I've played this year. It's definitely up there. It is a game you have to play. Well, that's the game I'm playing at the moment and I'm literally running out of money. You could do an OnlyFans. <laughs> no, 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 no. You could buy me a coffee and help out the channel. <laughs>
Now your content is shit, you're not even funny. Oh, 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 oh,